I mean, electricity in my case, we haven't paid a power bill for two years now. Could you detail what kind of solar setup you have and how long you've had it? Uh, do you have a battery, that kind of thing? Yeah, that's my thing. But basically the solar we've had for five years now, we've got a solar yeah. edge. So we originally, once again, quite skeptically got into solar, like it was during one of the lockdowns that was COVID. And we thought, oh, what are we going to do? So we thought, let's whack some solar on the house. Could be a good idea. So we've got a five kilowatt system with a five point it was and a five kilowatt inverter solar edge. Had that for about more or less three years and it more or less paid for itself a hardware electricity bill straight up. Yep. And I thought, this is good. So what can we do better? And obviously batteries came along, solar edge had a battery. So we decided, okay, let's double the solar and whack in a battery. And that was January last year. So that was 2020, almost had that two years now. Yeah. So basically in that time, like once we got the battery, we literally have not paid, we have not paid one power bill. We're in like last year at a $400 credit and this year we're 1100 Ooh. now on credit. Calculation on payback was 10 years initially for the battery and the extra panels or whatever under these conditions. Now I'd say it was going to be five year payback, basically making money out of it. And, and also as far as EV charging goes, I'm with a company called Amber Electric, which you may have heard of. Yeah. Well, energy supplier. They, so, yes. They, their calculations of energy price changes every half hour and you're paying the wholesale price. So it can vary from quite a high positive price, which can be up to $16 a kilowatt hour, which is insane, which I have got, and I've paid 200 bucks in one day, for example, down to negative prices, where it's minus yeah. like 30 cents or minus $10 to export, which is when you don't want to export because you're going to give them free electricity and then you're going to pay, get to pay them for the privilege. Mm. So but, from my understanding, yeah. Amber Electric works best for people who like to manage their electricity bill and look at the app a bit closely and a bit careful. I think perhaps it wouldn't suit people who are hands off and never look at those things because. They yeah. might miss out on the times when it tells you warning, warning, it's really expensive yes. because the coal power plant, plant has failed. Has failed. You yes. Know, cash rich, we've got cash riches ringing in because basically those, they're all on the edge, those coal plants get yes. money in the spikes. Mm -hmm. So I look at last 30 days, we've basically earned 500 bucks last 30 days from that. It's a charging like yesterday, when was it? No, Wednesday, I plugged in the car, we put in 10 kilowatts into the car which is like about 70 kilometers of range. Now, my battery was already full. I, the feed-in was negative. So my solar edge system automatically curtails production for me. So it cuts the power, it stops production, only uses what the house need, only produce what the house needs. So it won't add to the export because if I did export, I'd be charged for the privilege. You'd be cutting. It's been switched off. So that energy has been lost, if you like. So. I happened to come home at that at three o'clock that day. So I plugged the car in for an hour and a half. We put in 10 kilowatt hours. That would have been lost completely. So that was more like free power that would have been wasted. And that's gone into the car. So there's an example where I got some more or less free power because often people are negate, they're losing their feed in tariff by charging their car. But in this case, that's energy you could not ever have. No one could have because it would have been cur I've got friends who, I'm not, Solar Edge does automatic curtailment with with Amber, but I've got a friend who's got Tesla Powerwall too, for example, that doesn't do automatic curtailment because the, the Amber can only work on the inverter, the battery inverter. So it's probably a bit long story, but basically Solar Edge has a hybrid inverter. So it, the inverter acts on the battery and the panels. So whereas with Powerwall's a separate AC coupled system, it's different, but any case in, in his household, if he, to stop in export, he will turn on the air conditioner or, um, whatever, start right. doing anything to try and burn power, to stop the exports mm. paying money, mm. probably an insane reality, yeah. but that's what goes on out there, but that's how it works. But in my case, it's automatic. So maybe yours is much less stressful. Yeah. So I don't have to worry. It automatically does the spikes when the spikes come, like we had a spike last, last night, we got $25, mm. not a fortune, but the free day of electricity plus $25. And Electric the nice thing is you've got two electric cars. So. If you get a warning saying that there's massive amounts of excess renewable energy in the system and the price is good for you, then you can fill up both of your cars and well, at least top them up to a large extent. If it's there, just so 
in waiting because then there's a software like Amber has a software, it's called Amber for EVs. And basically that software is just looking, waiting for the opportunity, either it's solar, is it the grid the prices? So let's say the grid price goes to zero cents or one cent. And that's a cheap price. Like there's an 80 kilowatt battery for 80. Let's say you filled your car up for 80 cents. That seems cheap to well, me, but I don't know. Or let's say it's zero cents price yeah. or maybe we'll we'll take fill it up, but Ooh. obviously it's if you've got the car plugged in, the software's obviously monitoring here's the opportunity, either the sun's out or the price went to zero or negative or whatever, it starts filling. So it just does it automatically. You don't have to even think about it. So yeah, that's, but that's the, a good incentive to have a seven or 11 kilowatt home EV charger. If correct. you were on something like this Amber automatic EV charging, that's, or if you have an electricity plan, that's a bit more basic, but may have say 10 AM to 2 PM free power. Or some I'm short wind fill it up fast. Power. Yeah. I've got single phase uh, in my house. Can do theoretically up to seven kilowatt charging, which is pretty good. I think you can get three phase, which is eleven kilowatts. We've got twenty two kilowatts, but let's face, unless you got the Porsche Taycan or whatever, you can't accept twenty two kilowatts. Or a smart, actually one or three. Yes. Or smart a smart cheaper than a Porsche Taycan. Okay, but I think the obviously the the rate of charging on AC could be better, maybe, but. In reality, the car's sitting there gathering dust 70% of the time, let's face it. So, you know, charge it whenever. Obviously, people are obsessed with filling up your car in five seconds. But if you're sitting at a petrol station, who wants to be there? The quicker, the better. Let's say your car was in the garage, charge it then. There's a little bit of planning. And I'd say that if you own a car, let's say you're a car driver that has no planning capacity at all, likes just run out the door, never check your tire pressures, just take off and do something with an empty tank or whatever then probably don't buy an electric car. Just stick to petrol and do whatever they those people do. But if you have any kind of basic planning or common sense, then I think it's pretty easy. Obviously, there's a little bit of trepidation in people out there worried. And I, myself, had low expectations, which is good, I suppose, to have low, lower than higher, but totally doable. And, you know, obviously we're converts and we've got solar and battery and all that. So it actually, it makes, it makes, we're at basically energy independent. And that's my thing. It seems insane. Yep. We're all importing petrol from some exactly. place. I um, remember writing a story for SBS News Online more than 10 years ago, showing just how few days of fuel storage Australia had, if there was a war or some other event that cut us off from fuel tankers. And it's still the same situation. Like, why would you want to be dependent on that when well, everyone can have EVs and charge off solar or, or renewables from the grid. That's, you're certainly not losing on a performance point of view. It's certainly way cheaper, like to run, like uh, sort of a servicing cost, even purchasing. Yeah, sure. I've bought BMWs, they're in a similar price leg. In fact, they're more expensive, like a BMW M2, like that's 130K or something. I think it makes sense. And obviously from an energy point of view, we invest a lot of money in my home network, but the cars work in with the network. We've Obviously V to G is on the horizon. That's something I'd be into once it comes. And obviously got a couple of big batteries there, like a dump on the grid. I can just see it just from a dollar's point of view, like you're going to make money out of it, let alone. I think a lot of people are excited by vehicle to grid, which means sending large amounts of energy from your car through the house to the electricity grid. The charger called Ambibox, they've done some testing on existing cars like M BYD and an old Tesla from three years ago. They did bi-direction on that. Yeah, yeah. So Correct. it's either a new car that supports it natively or buy a box, but either way, it's not a hundred dollar investment. It'll be oh. several thousand minimum. At the moment, I think the only theoretical one was Ambibox. There's a SIG Energy one, but that's, you know, close to 10 grand, that module. Yeah, it will come and I think it's sensible and, and there will be cars and obviously, you know, you'd like to think they can retrofit the ones you've already got, but obviously I can understand the opportunity to sell a new car with a new feature, right? Thanks for your time, Alex. That was a really good kind of overview of two different kinds of Teslas and home solar and batteries. You're living in the future. Is yeah, what some people think, but actually you're living now. It's you're thinking of getting a battery next year now that New South Wales has rebates. So that's something to consider. Cool. And I think the home battery, believe it or not, is the best beyond even the car because it's just so useful. Mm. The fact that 
work so well with the whole house. So obviously there was a cost and you can spend your money on anything, but there's a long history of it. But Solar Edge just hasn't been around as long as Tesla Powerwall. Yeah, I'd hog, well, I'd recommend it, but obviously everyone to their own as to what they would yep. compare different options and budgets for you. Please like and subscribe so I can make more videos like this for you. Thanks and see you later.